In the previous videos, we looked at how the RAM and CPU run programs using the fetch decode execute cycle and how the different registers in the CPU work together in the cycle. This time, we will take a look at how data is temporarily stored in cache to accelerate the process. Before we look at how cache works, let's quickly discuss what it is and why we use it. Cache is a tiny amount of storage unit inside the CPU where data can be rapidly accessed to speed up a program's execution. It is similar to RAM, but much smaller and much faster. But this raises the question, if it is so much faster, why not make it bigger and get rid of RAM completely? As cache is located inside the CPU, its size is greatly limited. And furthermore, the type of technology used for cache memory is much more expensive than regular RAM. Because of these factors, the computer has to be very selective with the type of data stored in cache, usually placing the most regularly used data here to minimize the number of trips to RAM. There are a number of different complex algorithms that decide what goes into cache, but BitMachine uses a simple first-in, first-out system to store values. Real algorithms are more sophisticated than this, storing both values and instructions in cache as needed. Cache comes in three levels. Level 1, or L1 cache, sits inside CPU cores and is the smallest and fastest cache. L2 cache is next to the cores and are somewhat larger and slower. L3 cache is shared by the cores and it is the largest and slowest cache type. Data can also be moved around different cache levels, depending on their importance. Our program is simple, adding up a few numbers, some of which are the same, and storing the result. At the end, there are some redundant steps, used only to demonstrate cache flush. Let's skip through the first few steps, to the point where cache comes into play. After the first instruction has just been decoded, the operand is copied over to the memory address register. At this point, the CPU will try to find address 30 in RAM. But, because cache is also available, it will first look inside cache to see if it can find the data it is looking for. Cache uses a complex system of tags instead of addresses, but the result is the same. The CPU looks for address 30 in cache. Cache is of course empty at the moment, so it won't find the data it is looking for. This is called a cache miss. The address is located in RAM, and before loading it into the MDR, the data is placed into L1 cache, as this is the most recently used data. Now the data is placed into the MDR, and the cycle continues as normal. This time, the CPU is looking for address 31. And of course, this is another cache miss. To leave room for the incoming data from address 31, the value in the L1 cache is moved to L2 cache. Now the value in address 32 is moved to L1 cache along with its tag, then over to the MDR. We are now looking for address 30 again, but this time the address is found in cache resulting in a cache hit, meaning that data can be sent to the CPU without having to resort to RAM, and time can be saved. As address 30 has the most recently used data, it is moved back to L1 cache, swapping place with the value previously stored there. Now data has to be moved back to address 32. This address doesn't exist in cache, meaning another cache miss so the values already in cache are moved a step down to leave room for the new data, and the value intended for address 32 is moved into L1 cache. Now, as you can see, the instruction is to store data, but the data itself never actually got saved back into RAM. And this is fine, as any time the value in address 32 needs to be accessed, it can be done so through cache. But let's just load in the rest of the values so we can flush it back to RAM. The content of address 33 has to be loaded into the CPU. This address does not exist in cache, meaning a cache miss and that new data will have to be moved into cache. But as you can see, cache is already full. So to create room for new data, we have to perform a cache flush. In other words, sending the value back to RAM. When that is done, all other data are moved to leave room for the incoming value, which then can be inserted into L1 cache. Let's just allow the rest of the simulation to play out, as it will just be a repetition of the last step. Once address 6 has to be loaded into the CPU, 
The cache flush will cause the value tagged with address 32 to be sent back to the RAM, finally saving the result of the operation back into memory. And that concludes this video. If you would like to learn more about how to write machine level programs using BitMachine, click on this video. Or if you would like to give BitMachine a go yourself, follow the link in the description.